both exist. The Creator made no evil. Every baby born is good, lovable, loving, intelligent, beautiful, special, and wonderful. We can just ask Jan about her new grandson? Granddaughter. Granddaughter. So, um, it's who you really are. Evil is an illusion. The illusion that there is something, that there's really something fundamentally wrong in the creation. That sense of evil, of wrongness, at the very heart of creation, strikes terror in our souls. Earth-centered religions see nature as the best teacher, and deity itself reveals itself through nature. Where in nature does evil exist? Animals hunt and kill, are they evil? A tornado destroys a town, is it evil? An earthquake or tsunami may kill thousands, is it evil? There is no evil in nature. There are those who will say that it's the wrath of God, that he is mad at us for something we did or did not do. And the idea, it's an idea that I do not accept. We observe things as opposites, black and white, hot and cold, light and dark, good and bad. And I think there is a need to recognize this duality, but for what are they opposites? We see light as a source of energy. Darkness has no energy. It is the absence of light. We only perceive darkness having power in our minds. You cannot shine darkness into a room. When you open a door, light enters the room. It is not darkness escaping. Darkness only has energy if you give it to it. If you ask a child to go outside during the day, he will probably do so without hesitation but ask the child to do the same task with his time. Quite a different story. Evil is the result of ignorance. We avoid ignorance by increasing our knowledge. Knowledge can remove false fears, stereotypes, misconceptions, and prejudices. I think here at this church we know that better than most. Many have said that the more one obtains knowledge, especially with relations and humanities, the less tendency they have to be prejudiced and hateful. To sound like Master Yoda, knowledge leads to wisdom. Wisdom leads to understanding. Understanding leads to peace. Let those who choose not to learn, those who choose not to learn are much easier to lead on the path of hate. We can go back and look at some of the origins of evil. At least one source in today's society here is the Bible. The Bible states in Genesis 2, the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of the tree of the garden, you may, of every tree of the garden, you may eat freely. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. Genesis 3, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of, the, eat of the apple, it will open your eyes, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3. Then to Adam he said, Because you heeded the voice of your wife, and you have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it of all the days of your life. Verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, man has become like one of us to know good and evil. In verse 24. So he drove out man. So what happened in the, for in a day you shall eat of it, you shall surely not. Should man be dead? It's interesting to note that the serpent has been interpreted to be the bad guy here. Many believe the serpent to be Satan, even though nowhere in Genesis is Satan mentioned. Around the globe predating Christianity is what's known as the serpent culture. Throughout the world, in every culture, there are representations of the serpent. But rather than the bad guy, the serpent is seen as a representation of knowledge and wisdom. One of the best examples is the caudus wand, which is you see it as the medical wand with the, the winged staff of the 
serpent, the symbol of our medical profession, its two intertwining serpents on the staff. The philosophy of evil is linked to the devil. So we can't address evil while including the guy in the red suit. No, not Santa, Satan. So, there is no reference to Satan as an evil entity prior to the New Testament. He was seen as an opponent or an adversary, such as the story of Balaam, where he, Balaam and on, the, Balaam on his donkey, is deterred from his path when an angel of the Lord, Satan, stands in his path, forcing the donkey to head in a different direction. The mythological role of the adversary is seen in other cultures as well. In Native American culture, the role of trickster, or contrary, usually represented by the coyote, but it's not an evil presence. The concept of the devil as an all-evil entity is a creation from the religion of Zoroaster and Christianity. One might wonder where we get our image of Satan. As Christianity evolved, its view of being the only true religion saw other religions, religious views, not only as non-Christian, but anti-Christian. Therefore, the gods of other religions must be demonized. Unfortunately, this attitude really hasn't changed much. In pagan religion, the god is the god of nature. He is represented by the masculinity seen in nature. The obvious difference of the predominant male animals of the forest is that they have antlers or horns. So the pagan god is depicted as having horns, and he is also known as the horned one. What better way to characterize the bad guy of your religion than by using the good guy of somebody else's? And this process is known as demonization. In the early days, the Hebrews believed they were the chosen people. This resulted in an us versus them philosophy. After a time, their enemies became the enemies of their God. They saw the beliefs, practices, and observances of others as abominations. Fortune telling, casting spells, consulting with the dead, even though their own practices involved the same thing. Interestingly, by the end of the second century, what the Romans were upset about was not monotheism, but the concept of Satan. At this time in history, the Romans had a monotheistic concept. Celsus wrote in 180 CE that Christians showed their ignorance in making up a being opposed to God. He said it is a blasphemy to say that the greatest God has an adversary who constrains him in his capacity to do good. Celsus also accused Christians of inventing a heavenly rebellion in order to justify an earthly rebellion. In 180, the Christian writer Arrhenius wrote against heresies. Here, for the first time, we have Christians demonizing other Christians. According to him, a heretic was someone who differed in view from the majority and therefore was an agent of Satan. The definition of heresy means choice. So a heretic is someone who chooses. By the 11th century, actions against heretics had led to the accusations of witchcraft, which led to the wonderful era of the Inquisition that has been come to known as the Burning Times. It has been estimated that hundreds of thousands of people were killed for the crime of witchcraft. In reality, the people that were killed were almost all Christians, and the vast majority were women. The conclusion by St. Thomas Aquinas that women were defective men and therefore more easily seduced by temptation, Satan, and because of this, there must be more female witches than male witches. Hell appears to be a con an invention of the Roman Catholics. Most of our concepts of hell are found in the writing of Dante, the author of Dante's Inferno, and the poet John Milton's Paradise Lost. The origins of the word from the Greek, from Greek Hades, made, meant imperceptible or unseen. In Hebrew, the Old Testament, hell, has been translated from Sheol, which meant grave or pit, and has been determined that this meant the place of the dead. In the New Testament, Mark, Jesus used the term Gehenna, which is also interpreted as hell, and it actually meant garbage man. So do we really believe such a place exists, that God would send people there to suffer to torment for all eternity? simply for having a different religious belief. 
for not accepting Jesus as our Savior. Some say that there is no hell. Then what happens to people like Hitler and Saddam Hussein? No one knows what may happen after we die. But one way to move beyond this is to overcome the belief of judgment, condemnation, and punishment. That is how, that somehow, this is how we are supposed to see everything. It is a bold idea. It challenges so much of what we've been told and led to believe. So, I believe that evil is the result of fear and in a way to control people. We know bad things happen and bad people exist, but is it evil? If evil didn't exist before, it might now, but only because of all the energy that millions of minds have fed into it for the centuries. If evil exists, it's in the minds and in our hearts of humans, not in creation. The author, Greg Braddon, has related through his findings that the ancients said they were only that we are only capable of two emotions, love and whatever is perceived as the opposite of love. So, live well, laugh often, love much. Please join me in responsive reading number 597.